tuning in to another webisode of Creativity is Contagious. I'm wearing my workout clothes for one reason and one reason only. I plan on getting on the treadmill later on today and if I'm dressed appropriately, I'll be inspired because I'll remember that's why I'm wearing this outfit. I have to exercise. Exercise is so important in the creative process along with good health and a good diet. And a good diet mainly just means a normal lifestyle and how you eat on a regular basis. It doesn't mean doing it for one week and then stopping and then doing it again six months later so that you can lose weight. No, it means changing your entire outlook on food and health and well-being. There are many ways that you can stay healthy. Exercise is so important for so many reasons. It helps you have a wonderful, healthy state of mind. It makes your body look better, it makes you feel better, and it's generally good for you all around. Now drinking a lot of water is another thing that we need to focus on. We need to drink almost, I think it's about 64 ounces of water a day. That's eight eight ounce glasses. I try and I do fall short many days, but I do try. I know how important it is and I know that if I'm healthy, and if I stay healthy, then I'm going to be a lot more creative and a lot more of good use to everyone around me. And that's my hope. I want to be a blessing to others, and I want to be able to serve. And if I'm at my peak performance, I'll do the best job possible. It is fall. It is the fall weather, and this is my favorite time of year because I can get outside and exercise if I'd like to. I can get out and do yard work. And then I can also get to enjoy the harvest that everyone's put so much hard work into over the spring and summer. We have neighbors and friends who are bringing us their pears that they've grown. They're bringing us their pear preserves to enjoy. And we have apples and pumpkins. And there's so many ways that we can use those and incorporate it into our daily life or gift giving. I love to make apple pies, so I will peel my apples cut them up, and freeze them to store for later for making pies. Another thing that you can do to be healthy is when your bananas begin getting a little bit dark like this, you can go ahead and peel them and put them in a freezer bag, and then you can use them for fruit smoothies. It's wonderful and so easy. Plus, it's another easy way to have them stored if you want to make some banana bread. Lots of different things we can do. We have pumpkins around, and they are great for pies, and um, so many nice treats that you can make out of pumpkin. You can even add it to a soup. It's a wonderful base for a soup. I tried a recipe last year for a harvest chicken soup, and it was along the lines of your traditional chicken and rice or chicken noodle soup, and then you just add a can of pumpkin to it and it just changes the flavor. Add a little pinch of nutmeg. It was really, really wonderful, and, and I think that everyone that tasted it really enjoyed it, so try that. Now, um, watch out how much caffeine you drink. You probably know I have a lot of energy. That's actually natural energy, but I have a wonderful metabolism I'm blessed with and, and a great amount of energy. I guess my teachers and parents didn't like it when I was a kid because I'm ADD, and um, Caffeine is not really great for any of us in large doses, so limit your caffeine level, too. As I stand here by the coffee pot, it reminds me. One of my favorite beverages, that one, especially during the fall. Football games with a cup of coffee. Mm. Just uh, watch your limit. Okay, just wanted to uh, take you and show you a few more projects. And before I go, I think that it's fun to put little quotes inside of my pantry doors where they're not expected. And they're just cute, things to make you think. This was one of my favorites here. I love that. I just think that's so cute. I don't know who said it first, but I saw it and couldn't help printing it up and wanting to put it inside my pantry door. It just kind of makes you smile when you see it. So we're going to go outside and look at a project that I'm working on right now. And this is actually a group project because my husband started it and his daughter came up with the idea for the theme because the room that we're doing it for has a pirate theme to it 
and she showed us a picture of what she would like painted on it and what it is is it's a step stool so her little boy can climb up and be able to brush his teeth it's in two layers my husband is so creative and so talented at woodworking and he built that in stages to where it can actually be lifted up and we'll remove that bottom part as the child grows and gets taller where he doesn't need that much height and we're going to put a pirate ship here and I'm going to paint his name right here now there are a couple of different things that I can do to get those images there I can freehand it but what I've decided to do I have a few shortcut tricks that I really like to use because it keeps it very precise and keeps everything looking just right now for the pirate ship that I'm going to put on and what you're seeing here is just my tape to um, still not finished so just ignore the tape there um, I'm going to print up the pirate ship that she likes and cut it out and then I'm just going to do your good old-fashioned pasting it and decoupage with the medium that people like to use this is it you can get it at your local craft store um, you apply it with a sponge brush and the directions are on the, the um, container so it's fairly easy easy cleanup which is always one of my favorite things to do clean up easy with water now I'm gonna just decoupage that image on there and then it will be perfect the other thing I'm doing for the name is putting it on the step but I'm not going to decoupage that I'm actually going to hand paint it and I'm trying to decide between this lettering or this one I'm kind of leaning towards the bottom one because he is a child and it's a playful little piece so I need to figure out how to get that on here and make it look nice I can freehand it I feel pretty confident with that but if I were doing a more detailed lettering like the one up top I'd want everything to be really precise lettering is a tricky thing it needs to look really well or else some of your letters may look bigger and skinnier um, everything won't even out so I have figured out a way to do that you can go on the back of your page of your paper and you can take pencil and you can rub the back and fill it in where it's really dark and you can lay it down on the surface that you're going to be drawing on after you put it in place where it's supposed to be get it centered have it taped down have everything where you want it then you can trace over your letters and it will leave an imprint on the surface now it works better for light colored surfaces but I feel pretty confident that it's going to show through because what I'm actually going to use today instead of the good old pencil trick is I'm going to an old time standard your wonderful old-fashioned carbon paper I bet it's been a long time since any of you have seen this now you can find it in your office supply store if you're lucky if you're not lucky go to the art supply store and look for graphite paper it's about the same thing and you can use it the same way if you can't find that do the old pencil trick for tracing and if you don't feel like doing that on really light colored surfaces it actually works you can use newsprint as a sort of um, carbon paper now I also want to show you something really cool that my husband and I worked on it's always fun to do group projects where you work together in unison because everybody can enjoy the final product this is such a cool piece we call it free spirit can you see it it's just recycled out of old CDs glass beads can you see that corks driftwood lots of wonderful sparkly things and suspended using fishing wire this is a hard thing to get a picture of but if you can see it it's really cool and in the morning it's really nice because it sends light and prisms all over the place it's really cool so those are just a few things that I, I wanted to share with you today and I apologize for rushing through but as usual it's always a rush when we're doing these creativity is contagious webisodes but I just love sharing with you so much and I love when my friends and 
family share their projects with me. So inspire me. Let me know what you're up to. And if you're blogging or if you are having workshops or, you know, just sharing your creativity with others, I applaud you because people really benefit from that. I actually believe that creativity is therapy. I believe it with my whole heart. It's something that I'm studying. I am trying to um, encourage people to use artwork as a way to heal themselves, not from, you know, life-threatening diseases, but a way to take their mind off of things and a way to express their feelings. It is a wonderful way to share and to just get inside of who we are in this beautiful body, in this beautiful world that's been given to us, and a way that we can just make it a better place by being creative and being positive and focusing that energy on positive things. So I thank you again for tuning in. I apologize for rushing through, and I hope you will tune in again next time for another webisode of Creativity is Contagious. Check out our website at www.kimbohemia.net.